Hey, it's Joseph, and today is part one of a two-part series where we're going to be looking at one of the newest and most anticipated features released in Sketch 69. So if you're all up to date, you've got a new feature called Color Variables. And Color Variables are really just a major enhancement to document colors, which, if you use document colors liberally in the past, was a way to save color swatches within your document so that if you needed to use those same colors and wanted to stay consistent, you'd be able to choose the same colors from the color picker that you saved for yourself, right? It's just basically just your saved colors in the document. The problem was that those saved colors couldn't be redefined and that the objects using those saved colors couldn't stay in sync with the colors, which is exactly what color variables solve for. So let's take a look at how it works in Sketch. So here in this document, there are a few colors that are very commonly used. There's this purple color, and this purple color is being used on objects that are several different opacities. There's also a dark gray, there's also a white, which I think is absolute white. Uh, but you can see here that the purple is being used on several different layers, it's being used on icons, it's being used uh, on text, and if this color ever needed to be redefined, uh, the redefinition of that color would obviously affect uh, many layers. So what we need to do is take the colors that exist in this document and turn them into color variables. That's something that does not happen automatically. So we're going to have to select an object that has a color. Uh, it could be a fill, could be a text color, could be really anywhere that a color is used on the inspector. And uh, we'll bring up the color picker. And when we do so, we have this new option here to create a color variable, which is basically just to save a document color, uh, but also to link this object to that color or link this property of this object to that color. So I'm going to choose create color variable here, and it asks me to give it a name. I'm going to name it primary brand and click create. And here we have it, and it looks just like a document color, just like before. Uh, the big difference is that the object, uh, specifically the fill here on this object, is now attached to this color. And the way that we can tell it's attached, uh, besides the option to detach it here uh, showing up in the color picker, is that next to the color swatch, there's a little icon here that represents color variables. And uh, you'll notice that that is purple instead of gray. If I select another object, despite the fact that this object is that same purple color, it has not yet been attached to that color variable. So creating a color variable and attaching other layers to that color variable is two separate steps. And uh, part two of this video series is going to be all about connecting your documents, which obviously have a lot of layers and a lot of properties and probably have some layer styles, connecting all those things to your color variables and creating color variables from an existing document. In this video, we're just looking at the basics of creating uh, color variables and applying them to layers. So this is going to be a very one by one process. But if you want to see how to do a whole document, an existing document, that's what part two of this video series is going to be all about. So again, if I've got a layer here uh, that has a color associated with it, but doesn't have a color variable associated with it yet, I've got to go to the color picker and I've got to click on the color variable to apply it. And you can see here that the name of the color variable is propagated underneath the little color chip here. And uh, that icon has turned purple because that icon uh, is now reflecting that we're connected to that color variable. Uh, one important thing to note here is that the color variable includes the opacity of the fill. So this is this purple color, this hex code here, which is grayed out because it's now linked to a variable and it's not something that is meant for me to mess with anymore. Uh, and the opacity is also grayed out because that's part of the color variable. So uh, the reason I make a point of that is because these objects here, these rings that are laid on top of one another, are different opacities but it's the object opacity, the layer opacity, that's reduced to 40% here. It's not the fill opacity. So the fact that they have the same fill opacity allows me to use one single color variable for all of them, and then I can use the opacity of the layer uh, to create this, uh, this sort of gradient ring effect going on here. If you have multiple densities or multiple opacities of a color, uh, you may end up with different color variables. So if I commonly use this purple color at 100%, but I sometimes used it as 50, 
at 50%, uh, it would behoove me to create two separate color variables, one at 100%, one at 50%. Uh, but that really isn't the case here. I'm only using the color at 100%. It's just the objects uh, that entirely uh, vary in opacity here. Uh, this background object, though, this is actually a different uh, a different purple. This isn't the same purple at a reduced opacity. This is a different shade of purple, which I am going to define as another color variable. And I'm going to name this secondary brand. And I'm not including the name of the color in the name of the color variable because if I name it purple, well, what if it changes? What if it becomes more of a blue? What if it becomes royal blue, which is kind of a purplish blue, but isn't really purple anymore. I don't want to have to change the name of it. The name kind of describes the intent, how the color is being used, uh, more so than the color itself, which could later uh, be redefined. So again, it's all about creating the color variables and then attaching the layers to the color variables. So as you can see here, this document has many, many layers that need to become attached to these color variables, which could be tedious. It could take a long time. But if you watch the part two of this video, uh, I'll show you how to do it very quickly and very easily uh, in a more automated way versus going one by one, which will drive you absolutely insane. So these color variables, they exist in the document. They become part of the document. So I've just created two of them that are now part of this document. So now the question is, how do we manage them? Uh, how do we group them? How do we rename them? How do we stay organized? How do we delete them if we make a mistake uh, or redefine them if we want to change uh, the color? Uh, that all happens in this new components view, which was also added in Sketch 69. It's still in beta, so it could change. Uh, but over here on the toolbar, if we switch to the components view, it's a full screen takeover. It's a whole different mode where I can see any symbols, textiles, layer styles, or colors that exist within this document. So here on the colors tab, I can see the color variables that I've saved. So from here, there are a few things that I can do. Um, I can group color variables together. So these two are brand colors. So I might want to select them both, press Command G to create a group. And then over here on the sidebar, uh, that's where the group has been created. And I can rename it brand. Another way to accomplish this is uh, in the naming of the color variables themselves. So when I created this primary brand color variable, if I wanted it to instantly and automatically go into a group called brand, I could, just like with symbols and with textiles and layer styles, um, I could have named it brand slash primary brand. Uh, anytime you use a slash in the naming convention of symbols, textiles, layer styles, or color variables, um, the prefix before that slash becomes a group name. So I could have done that, but I didn't do that. So you can always later group things up uh, here in this view. It's totally up to you. The other thing you can do here is create a new color variable. So when you create a new color variable, it just basically gives you the color picker over on the inspector. And uh, you can choose a color or you can manually enter a color here and uh, you can give it a name. Similarly, you can select an existing color variable and redefine it uh, as well as rename it over here on the sidebar. Uh, or the inspector as it's called. So let's actually do that. Let's redefine this color. I'm going to redefine the primary brand color and I'm going to do exactly what we were talking about before and I'm going to make it blue instead of purple. And uh, I'll apply the same shift to the secondary brand color. And uh, as I make these changes, including changes to the name, anything that I do over here on the inspector is uh, going to affect my document immediately. Uh, so if I go back to my design canvas, you can see here that all the layers that were attached to that color variable have changed automatically and instantly. Um, what hasn't happened is all the layers that were not connected to the color variable have not changed. Um, so I'll show you real quick just a, a little sneak peek of something that's coming in part two of this video. Um, I could go to edit on the menu bar and choose find and replace color. And I can find any instances of that purple color right? Which that purple color doesn't have, it's just a hex code, right? That's the purple color that is not connected to a color variable. And I can find any instance of that color and replace it with my primary brand color, right? Which ultimately ended up being the replacement uh, for that purple color. When I choose replace, I'm not just replacing the color. I'm also replacing the property that had a hex code associated with it to now be a property 
that has the color variable associated with it. So now again, if I redefine the color variable, it will redefine the color wherever it's being used in the document. So let me do the same thing here with this purple color. I'm gonna go to edit, find and replace color. And the shortcut is option command F for those of you who like keyboard shortcuts. I'm one of those people. And when you have a layer selected, it's kind of nice. Uh, the find box will already have the color um, selected from the layer that you had selected when you open find and replace. So there's my kind of lighter lavender color, which is going to get replaced with my lighter brand color. And I'll click replace here. And uh, now we're getting warmer. Now more of our prominent uh, brand colors are associated with the variables that we've created. So again, if we want to redefine, if we say, you know what, the purple worked better, we can go back into our color variables in the components view and uh, we can reestablish those colors. In the real world, I would be more careful about what colors I'm choosing here, but I'm just gonna go back to a purple-ish color uh, for those two variables. And when I go back everywhere that they were being used, which includes the icons, these shapes here, the text layers, everywhere, those colors have updated. So it's that easy. Um, as far as deviating from color variables is concerned, uh, it's as easy as just going to the color picker and making a change. Uh, if you make a change on the color picker here, the first thing that's gonna happen is it's automatically gonna detach that layer from the color picker. So you don't, or from the color variable, I should say. Uh, so you don't have to worry about accidentally redefining a color variable and making a change that's gonna propagate all throughout a large document. Uh, you can't do that on accident. You would have to go into uh, the color variable um, in order to uh, redefine it or you can do that from the inspector by instead of just changing the color here, first click edit variable and then any change that you make will happen everywhere. Uh, it'll only happen everywhere once you click update. So you'll notice that just this one layer is changing so I can preview it and then when I click update, there we go. It changes absolutely everywhere. So again, you have to do an extra deliberate step. You have to choose to edit the variable or you have to go into your color variables uh, in the component library. So nothing's gonna happen accidentally and suddenly. I'm gonna hit undo here to go back. Uh, there is a button that says detach variable. And you might be thinking, okay, if you can just play with the color picker, why would you ever have to click detach variable? Uh, detach variable is just if you don't want this object to be connected to the variable, but you also don't wanna change the color. So rather than having to wiggle the color and then wiggle it back to where it was, you could just click detach variable. So the color stays the same, it looks the same, but it's no longer connected uh, to that color variable. So if every other layer gets redefined through the variable, this layer will get left alone. Uh, this went back to gray, it's no longer attached. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the gist of creating and applying and updating uh, color variables. You can also delete them naturally. So if I go back into the canvas view here, or the component view rather, um, I can choose to just basically select something and hit delete on the keyboard, or you can always right click uh, and choose delete from the drop down menu. And when you delete a color variable, uh, kind of like when you delete a symbol or any other style for that matter, um, it's not gonna affect the appearance of your document. They're just no longer gonna be connected um, to a, a variable that can be updated centrally. So uh, these basically just went back to being regular old hex codes, which is fine. No harm done. Uh, so if you ever need to start over or go back, or if you make a mistake, create a variable that shouldn't exist, um, it's it's very, very low risk. These, these features are, are very low risk to experiment with. Um, uh, so that's now looking good. Uh, I've got no variables in this document anymore. Uh, but one last thing that I do want to show you, which is going to require me to undo, uh, deleting my color variables. There we go. I just hit command Z. So they're back. Um, I want to show you the new insert window and how that can be used for color variables as well. Cause you might be thinking, okay, this is nice. This view where I can see everything nice and big. Uh, but I can't really just slap these onto a layer because I can't see my design canvas. I can't see my layers. Uh, so what we do have now is if you press the letter C on the keyboard, we have this new components. Uh, it's basically the insert component window, which allows me to browse the same content that we saw in that full screen components view with the symbols, textiles, 
layer styles, and colors. And now from here, you have two options. You can either drag a color variable directly onto a layer. You'll see the little outline show confirmation that, that it recognizes the layer. And when you drop it, it'll replace the fill if it has a fill. If it has nothing but a border, it'll replace the border. Or if you have a border, a fill, and a shadow, and you want to uh, insert a color variable into a specific property on the inspector, uh, you can drag directly onto the color chip in the inspector. So if I wanted a purple border, I could drag it directly onto borders. And now I can enable or disable that border. Um, same goes for shadows, inner shadows, etc. So yeah, you can drag directly onto the canvas or you can drag onto the inspector. And I do recommend getting into the habit of dragging to the inspector because groups get in the way uh, when you're dragging these things onto the canvas. You'll notice that when I'm dragging here, I don't get those blue outlines. And the reason for that is because these objects are in a group and I can't change the color of the group. Uh, and when I drop it, it's going to insert a new object with the color uh, rather than redefining the color. So it doesn't understand which layer I was trying to drop it on. And uh, unfortunately, and maybe this will change in the future, if I hold command, which normally drills through a group to select individual layers, uh, it doesn't seem to work. So that's like an unfortunate uh, little shortcoming here. Uh, so there's no way uh, to get directly into the group. Uh, unless, of course, ahead of time, you have the foresight to switch this option on the inspector to select a group's content on click, uh, in which case you can drop uh, through the group um, onto the individual objects. Uh, in this case, I have a group in a group, so I'd have to do that uh, multiple times. There we go. Now it should work, now that there are no groups uh, in the way. At least there are no groups that are being perceived as being in the way. So I can drop that uh, directly onto an object. So again, groups can get in the way, so you may need to drag things uh, onto the inspector instead of onto the layer uh, itself. So that's the gist of it. That's how color variables work in terms of creating them, applying them to layers. Uh, we also touched on find and replace, which we're going to go into much, much greater detail in the next video where we talk about how to apply color variables to an existing document. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, watch part two. Uh, I'll slap a link to it in this video uh, on the screen right now somewhere. And I'll see you soon.